guys. So excited to be together today. I asked everyone to bring a middle school memento. I mm-hmm. thought it could be fun to sort of see like a physical object. For you listeners, you're going to have to travel over to YouTube if you want to see it, but uh, we'll describe them as well. But something that sort of, yeah, was emblematic of our middle school experiences. It's in my bag. I have yeah, to yeah, yeah, rummage yeah. through your bag. You're, 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 you can get some real, some real life content right now. <laughs> this is me <laughs> rummaging through my actual backpack. Do you hear this? <laughs> it's not ASMR. It's just like us. <laughs> um, no, he's not, but you know, there's a backpack involved. You see this? Can you hold? Is it, it's a baby shoe. I found this on the way here, and I have no idea whose it is Stop. now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a baby shoe for those who are. are um, it's it's a wee bock, which is adorable. There is some black mold growing on it because it's thirty six years old, or, or thirty five wow. maybe, if I was wearing it when I was um one. But yeah, um, the joke is is that I have absolutely nothing left of my middle school years that I didn't attend. Mm. So yeah, this is this is. I was at my mom's. Wow. Had no. I was like, I have. I don't know how, where anything. If anything is left from that stage of life, I don't know where it would be or what it is. But this That's this really little sweet. this little baby shoe. Just one. He, he, not both. When but he just was just. One? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Aww. No. He he got he got picked up by the rapture. And this is you know this is like. In fact, when I found this, it was spinning like the top in Inception on a table. <laughs> <laughs> it's so yeah. cute. Pen is actually an funny? avatar. The real pen yeah. was up in uh-huh. the rapture. Yeah. Okay, I'm wearing mine. So I'm going to stand up, take off my jacket. Oh, wow. Um, the only reason that I even have this, this is a shirt from when I was 12 years old is because my dad appropriated it and kept it in great condition. I don't keep anything. I am. I throw things away that I shouldn't. Um, so I think this is the only like real thing I have from middle school besides a yearbook. But this is a shirt that says Taller de la Juventud. Baha'i, and it has, um, for those who are not watching, it has a nine-pointed green, like bright green star in the middle and a little frog called a koki. And the nine-pointed <laughs> star represents, like, it's a symbol in the Baha'i faith, and the koki is the national, is like the most beloved little animal creature in Puerto Rico. It's a little frog that goes koki, koki, at night. Um, it actually says koki. Yeah, the frog makes that noise. And it's called koki? Yeah. It goes koki, So its name, its name is onomatopoeic. Yes. It's <laughs> pronounced just say. like that. Um, but basically when I was like 12 to 15, I was in a a youth workshop where we would go around the island and perform these really cringy, terrible dances on like social justice themes. And I remember one vividly was like an anti-drug dance. It was to the song Turn Around. And uh, I was almost always the youngest person in that workshop. So I was always like the kid that was in turmoil in any dance. I just remember I was like in the middle of the dance and I would be doing all these strange, <laughs> like really horrifyingly embarrassing You were movements. the addicted kid? I was the kid who was like suffering because her mom was addicted. Oh and I God. was in the middle oh. like just... <laughs> What an era. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope wow. nobody has video of that, but I have so many fond memories of Baha'i Youth Workshop in Puerto Rico. Shout out Tahere, shout out Fernando. Cute. Well, similar to you guys, I barely have anything from my youth. My mom like famously throws everything away at the first chance she gets. Like all my yearbooks gone, <gasps> shredded. No, she didn't shred them, but <laughs> she should have. She basically Can you imagine that would be what hard. <laughs> Why isn't this going through? Um, But I did pick up this pen because I have vivid memories of sitting in like seventh grade science class and not listening to anything that was going on, but just working so hard at trying to change my handwriting. (laughs) I I was like, I hate my handwriting. It's not cute. Uh, And it needs to be cuter. And really just like, did it work? No, no. It would like, it would last for a few days and then, you know, Halfway through a page, I would revert back to my old handwriting. And and ever since then, ever since I can remember, I've hated my handwriting. I have successfully changed my handwriting to to what really what um yeah, i it's possible for me to to uproot habit and completely change my appearance <laughs> so that I am cooler than I feel. Mm. And um, I found a way to get paid for it. <laughs> Uh, but I started with my handwriting. Yeah, it's it's it's. Um, I spent some time training myself to make the the stem of the Y just a straight line, as opposed Ooh. to mm. diagonal or with a loop. Have you stuck with that? Yeah, I mean, now I can't. Now I That's have no cool. interest in changing it, and it's a habit. But that like, is very um, cool, actually. I think I think all of these things are subjective. But the Y with the straight 
down tail. That's cool. Yeah. It suggests humility, but in reality, it's not. <laughs> You're like, I know exactly what I'm doing. You know, speaking of knowing exactly what we're doing here, uh, actually, wh what I'm thinking of, why this is a great transition, and I won't explain to you why it's a great transition. <laughs> that's that's a accurate. hallmark of a great transition is yeah, when you it, it explain is, it, it is. I'm going to stop lands. doing the thing and explain <laughs> why the thing works. Yeah. It's not because we know exactly what we're doing, because I think Jenny Han, our guest, does. I'm uh, honest, honest. She's a New York Times number one bestselling author. Um, best known for her relatable portrayals of teenage life and love. If you don't already know who I'm talking about, you know her iconic trilogy, To All the Boys I've Loved Before. So I suppose there's at least three boys? Yeah. <laughs> um, slow down! <laughs> you know? You're just a teenager. Anyway, uh, this was adapted into, you know, three movies. Three huge movies on Netflix. Um, you can look up Netflix if you're not familiar, but... Uh, <laughs> The Summer I Turned Pretty series, which is now where she's a full-blown showrunner, and it's streaming on Amazon Prime or Prime Video. And then she's also got a trilogy, Burn for Burn. So she's got, she's she's a, she's a writer. She's also served as a judge for the National Book Awards mm. and has been recognized by various organizations for her contributions to literature. Uh, what what I'm really fascinated with here is is how a person who um, who's dedicated a life to writing focuses on the same period of life that, 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 that we do, albeit in a different way and probably with a lot more success. Not definitely with a lot more success. <laughs> um, but, you know, she's, she's dedicated her, her life to, and went to school for it and got a degree for it. Like, you know, telling stories to young people. And, and I really want to hear about what got her there. I think you will too. So don't go anywhere else. Unless it's to another podcasting platform where you'll pick up from where we left off. Welcome to Pod Crushed. We're your hosts. I'm Penn. I'm Nava. And I'm Sophie. And I think we would have been your middle school besties. Unless you're really cute, and then I'd be catching feelings and crying all the time. <laughs> cute. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Jenny. Hi. Welcome. Thank so excited you. to nice meet you guys. Yeah. Jenny, I just want to say, just in case you were worried you were coming on some kind of fledgling podcast, I have a badge. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I just got this today. Nice. This is, this is me... A person who, since middle school, has been professional and not really had, like, normal life experiences. When I get something like a badge, mm. and I want to do this, too. This is... This is <laughs> when I get, yeah. and it's, it's, by the way, the least official-looking badge. <laughs> it doesn't look like you that much. Really? From here... Is it because I'm smiling? Maybe because my eyes are bad. It looks a little bit like that guy from, um... He's on The Good Place. Jason... Matsukas. Matsukas? Yeah. Oh, you're... Oh, yeah, right. so a lot of people That's, say that. Uh, you're not the only one. You're not the only one. I guess the idea is squint and we look exactly the same. You don't even have to squint. You just have to be on TikTok, I guess. You have dedicated your life professionally, creatively to, like, exploring the same time of life that we do. Um, so before we get into, like, what brought you there as a, as a fully-fledged adult, let's just start when you were there, you know? What, what was 12- and 13-year-old Jenny Han like? Um... 12 year old me was, I like to read a lot mm -hmm. and I like to bake. It's kind of not that different, I guess, from no. me today. Mm. Yeah. Same dress uh, or? Um, probably. <laughs> <laughs> a spree or, or maybe gap, gap kids. Oh, yeah. Um, cute. Yeah. I like to read. I like to bake. And um, that's, that was, that was my middle school vibe. Um, I would say, you know, middle school actually wasn't like the best. Mm. It was a little bit, you know, bullyish at that time. I was like the only Asian kid in my school, besides wow. like one other guy, um, and like my cousin. Mm. Um, was your cousin the same age? No, oh. no. And that uh, the cousin was in elementary school, I would say, and then middle school. Um, it wasn't. There really weren't any Asian people around, so I definitely did get like this one guy, Mike. He's um throw spitballs at me on the bus Aww. for being Asian. For being Asian. Yeah, for being Asian. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But he was also just kind of a tyrant. Um, so so middle school, kind of tough. Also, I was bad at math, like really bad at math. So then my whole schedule, you know how they used to do it? So it's like the honors kids were with the honors kids, mm -hmm. right? And then you had the lunch, you'd have like gym, you'd have your like elective. And so because I was bad at math, my whole thing was like a little bit messed up. So then I was always at the, the lunch with like... Um, you know, kids who were going to beat me up. 
Well, I'm really. Mm. No, this is uh, this is uh, this is uh, yeah. what we do. It. Sure, but it was fine. It was it's it was well. You know, to me, that's like it's fine on one hand because like yeah, you're like you're fine. You got yeah. through it. And then and then and then you know, I don't want to suggest that success makes everything okay. But when you <laughs> you you strike me as a person who's like, you're a, a a a nice case of somebody who seems like they've made it because they're finding like alignment. Right? Like what you do seems to speak to who you are. I th- I think so. I think that um I'm very sensitive. Mm. And so I would say like I've often felt like a little bit like I have a like my personal antenna is a little bit like finely tuned. So mm. sometimes it can be a bit much when you're just picking up other people's vibes all the time and being like, I can see this person's a little bit annoyed or mm. I wanna, you know, um cheer this person up. And I think it helps me with storytelling because you're constantly, I think, coming from a place of empathy and just thinking what it's like to be in someone else's shoes. Um, but it can also be really exhausting. There's also this sort of, like, old saying. I don't know how old it is or how true it is. But Never you, judge the, a... No, 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 the, no, the, no. Um, I, I'm not capable of he that. He puts that to every everywhere. author, Jenny. So embarrassing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> never judge a book by its color. No, no, so. I was going to say never judge... A man, I don't know if this is actually now like a, man a by problematic his, by his phrase. Boots? No, it's something like um, until you've walked in their moccasins or something. Oh. Like it's oh. claiming to be an old native yeah. adage. I don't know if that's true or not. Oh, I've yeah. never heard that. I've heard like what, walk a mile in someone else's shoes? Yeah, or something yeah. something like that. So we've gone way left. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably like cut, cut, cut. <laughs> kick out part. You heard that one? What I was going to say was, um, are you like any of your characters or which ones? All of them. All I of think them. The never write, I mean, write what you know, I think great. But it's also like write what you're interested in, right? Mm-hmm. What like you're excited about. Um, I think all my characters, in fact, people, it always makes me laugh because um, like the more like annoying characters, people are like, oh, like I hate that character. You know, like that's part like, of that's me. me. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like the worst little, like the annoying things that you know about yourself mm-hmm. yeah. that you can sort of like infuse. It's just because it's just like, you know, humanity just making yeah, it totally. feel really real. I don't know. People often ask me about writing for young people specifically and like why and um, how is it different? And I just don't see it as different at all. I think that um, people are people and it's just like, um, I don't I don't approach like character in that way. I recently watched The Summer I Turned Pretty. I actually texted Ooh. Penn and Nava, and I was, I was like, I'm sobbing. I was like, I'm clearly <laughs> oh. Jenny Han's exact target audience because it was really moving. And it's yeah. also oh, so sweet you. to, like, go back to that time of, like, high school. Um, but there was a line in it where Belly's mom says to her that we have to treasure our friendships because boys mm-hmm. will come and go, or relationships mm-hmm. will come and go. Mm-hmm. And we have to hold on to our friendships. And I was wondering, that line struck me, and I was wondering for you, what were your friendships like around that time of life? Super intense. Um, and I think I was always um, someone who had, like, best friends. But I wasn't, like, I had a lot of um, ardent, like, crushes on people. And I was um, definitely, like, you know, that's why I brought my, uh, you asked me to bring something from middle school. Um, yeah. And I brought my, um hat box if Aww. if anyone has watched um to all the boys of love before yeah. you will know that um it the story is centered around a girl who writes love letters uh to um these unrequited crushes but she keeps them in the hat box but then her mm. sister mails them all out and they get sent but they were really for her eyes only this is my hat box that i had nice. um where i put my letters so oh actually the story God, is that's amazing Partly true, yeah. or did that? Yeah, they did didn't get sent okay. out. Right. Uh, it was like, what? It was like a what if they got sent out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, what a great premise! Yeah. Like Thanks. to come to come so from your own experience and to be so simple. Could you <laughs> just clue us into like what one of those letters would have been like? Like what you might have said to one of these. Boys? Oh yeah, you know why? Because um, so when the book first came out, I was like, you know, it'd be so fun if I like read one of the letters um, on tour. At the, uh, at the like party and like you know everyone's yeah. gonna love it and then I get up there and um I start reading the letter and it's so raw and it's like Aww. dear um you know you think that like you think you know me oh, wow. <laughs> it was Aww, like um Jenny. I know you and I know that you know you are a boy who you know it was really like uh deeply like looking at this person and like um feeling so um 
like these really strong, like deep wells of emotion yeah. about this person. Mm. And um, and I said, I um, I'm not good at blah 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 or this or that, but I know um, I am good at like writing. So I'm gonna do what I do best and like write you this letter and like tell you how I feel about you. Mm. And it was so intense. And um, had you did you read it before you? No, I was just getting up there and, <laughs> really? and literally it was like notebook oh paper. God. You just thought you just, you just taking a swing. Blind. Yeah, oh. and then I'm looking out, and everyone's laughing, loving it, and I felt like my face was oh. so red. I don't actually get embarrassed that easily. I was so embarrassed. Like I'm talking yeah. now, and I can feel my face like flushing at the stuff that I said, <laughs> and um, because it was so real. Yeah, and I didn't totally think anyone was gonna real. ever hear it. It was for mm-hmm. me, mm-hmm. you know. And he was never. Is that I was being so like vulnerable, open, like and naked in this letter. And then I did never, I never did it again. I was like, yeah. no, that's yeah. the end of that. Even though people loved it, for me, it was it was never meant for anyone else to hear it. It was just for yeah. me to like say goodbye to this person. Jenny, I have wow. a, a story. <laughs> Mine got sent. So when I was in college, I had an ardent crush. I love that phrase. M- m- like beyond that, like just almost obsessed with this guy. I like really want to say his name because he has a great name, but I won't. Um, and we had like a situation ship. It was like confusing, murky, and it ended. And one of my best, one of my best friends at the time, Ariana, was like, "Just write him a, an email with like everything you would say to him, just for yourself. Don't send it. Save it as Don't a draft." Send it. Why so I you? did that. I like wrote the email. Oh, no. I put his name in the two bar, but I Why'd saved you it put as his a, name I in know, the two bar. I know, but what? I, I saved it as a draft, and it was like as if I had written a letter to my therapist, like something you would never actually say to someone, oh. even if you were bold enough. And our uh, we had Outlook at the university, and it had a glitch where after 24 hours it would say, it would send all your drafts. What? So it sent him the letter, and I didn't that find out until I got his response. <laughs> I was so humiliated. I like almost dropped the class we had together. It was humiliating. He he was That's quite horrible. decent about it, but wait, it was and then you had so a class together. Oh yeah, we had we had two classes. We had French and English together. Oh, it was no. so it was truly but one of the most had embarrassing. Been, it things. was like you had a real thing. It wasn't like. No, I would say not really. It was more one-sided. We were, like, friends, and he was super, super flirty. He would ask me mm. out once in a while, but he would never, like, kiss or anything. So it was confusing to me, which was, like, part of what came out in that email. But, oh, oh so embarrassing. Oh it's God. truly, like, a That's top five brutal. humiliating moment. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. would agree with you. And then, of course, he's like, this girl is crazy. <laughs> like, this is really a lot. Well, did you wait, explain did you to explain? him, like, No, I never told him. I was so, I never told him. No, I didn't you didn't think explain that was better to yourself. Be. I, I wasn't planning to send you this email, and there's a glitch in Outlook. I was like, he's gonna. Think that's, <laughs> that's true. That's it's true. true. I just really... never brought it up. Never brought it up. We've never talked well, about no. it. For mine though, after the movie came out, everyone thought they were like, I definitely was getting a lot of random emails from guys from my past. Really? And I think everyone was like fishing. I think hoping. Oh, uh, is it me? Like, like, was I that about me? Am yeah, I know literally. Oh, yeah. Cringe. Am literally, Peter? everyone thought they were like Peter Kavinsky. Yeah. It was like, I know what you're doing. I haven't heard from you in like years. And then it's just like, hey, congrats on everything. I think they were hoping for that little like nugget so they could just have that yeah. as an anecdote right. to tell yeah. people, oh, that, that character is like me. Did yeah. you actually ever tell any of the five boys who they were? No. No. They don't deserve to. Yeah, know. keep that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, respect. Well, we've already kind of jumped to this, but we ask every guest to tell us about their first love and first heartbreak. Would you mind sharing that story with us? I guess I would say that 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 first letter, who it was for, I was definitely it was a heartbreak. Um, not that it was like we were ever like together, but it was like I was so um, just like obsessed. Mm-hmm. with him and he wasn't very nice and I think um mm-hmm. I don't at that time like you as a young person I think you can sort of like fixate on somebody and you kind of like imbue them with all these qualities that you think they have and like you um read so much into every little you know it's like yeah you want this piece of gum and you're like mm, yeah course. like yeah. I do oh gum is huge yeah, I thought like, you were gonna like, say something less gum is like or, oh you know what the best was was like when they were like listening to music their headphones, mm. and then you're like, uh, then they're like, you want, you want to hear? It? And then you're like, sharing the headphones? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like those? Buds. So it's on the a bus? Classic moment. Yeah, yeah on yeah. the bus. And then you're sitting there, and your like, heart is racing. You're like, yeah. can you hear yeah. my heart like beating like so fast right now? And you're Aww. just like, yeah, I love I love Pearl Jam. I love, like, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Amazing. So you're saying you didn't love Pearl Jam? No, I did. Jam. In no. fact, like, then, yeah, I did. I did after I was listening to it um, <laughs> on his little, like, Sony disc, man. Man. For sure. Oh, wow. And when he would call, I would be like, 
I'd like have the music on in the background. Like, oh hey, like I was just listening yeah. to some jam. <laughs> You know, just 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 start. Let me turn down the PJ. <laughs> uh, like Jeremy's playing really loud yeah. uh, in the background. I had a lot of good uh, Chris for the mill. One might say I had written. I wrote a play about him. Wrote many poems. Wow. Um, it, when I was in, in high school, uh, a song. There was a, there was a lot that I like put into this. And um, do you play music? No. <laughs> <laughs> Can I ask, Jenny, we've heard a little bit about how you felt about him. Did he know how you felt? Yeah, he knew. Okay. For sure. For and, sure. He, and he wasn't kind on top of that. No, he definitely wasn't. He liked, you know, he liked... The power the dynamic. Yeah. Where yeah. it was like just the like, it would be that thing. Oh my God, I hope he isn't... I don't think... I don't even know if he listens to podcasts. I doubt. I'm going to go um, ahead and take a stab at he's not listening. To okay. this podcast. To this, not because <laughs> yeah. of you, Jenny, because of us. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not because of you, because of us. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know hmm. that thing where they would like you would talk to them on the phone for like hours, but then you'd see them um, like at school or wherever, mm-hmm. and then they would it would be like you would just like your eyes would like not even like meet yeah. in the hallway yeah. um, because it gets like at night on the phone, it you can just say anything to somebody, you know, so true, yeah. right? And you just get really like deep with somebody, and then yeah. for some reason it's really embarrassing to have been so vulnerable mm-hmm. before. I remember that. I remember having so many long conversations. And always on a telephone that had a cord. And I'm just wondering, I'm not imagining, you know, kids on like their... I think they are kind of like FaceTime. Yeah, FaceTime. Face yeah, yeah, I think but, they're but, like... But, but, but don't you think that that drastically changes the kind of vulnerability you can have? A voice? Like, you could be, like, it's Anything. like a voice in the dark. Yes. Yeah. And it's really intimate. Yes. It's totally different. Like, you don't have to, it's like, true. it doesn't matter what you look like or what you're doing. You're just, like, the voice, and you can not look at someone's eyes. You can just say Completely. stuff. Completely. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. what I mean. Is like, I know that FaceTime or, or whatever the equipment, Snapchat, whatever it is, they're, they're, they're up, they have it on, and they're seeing everything, but it's not, there's something that feels to me intimate. like the way, no, it's not as intimate, and also they can move around. You couldn't move around yeah. the same way. So you really, like, you're just in a different headspace then, mm-hmm. you know? I really am recalling now the... The way that I would talk to, especially girls. Here's a question for you: <clears throat> Were you into them, or were you just like someone to talk to? No, 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 totally into them. No, see, I had, I had, because I was a bit younger. Um, I had the 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 same kind of relationship that you're talking about. Like, I was definitely not having any girlfriends. I was, I was, uh, I was, um, it was always having crushes on, on an unrequited uh, friend. And I don't know how to love from with a friend. But they knew. I I mean, I don't know. I think I was very good at hiding my emotions. Um, got a lot of practice at home, you know. Wink, wink. Uh, stupid joke. I no, I did, I did, um, I did. I think I was a little bit stoic. And again, I think I'm. I've carried that into adulthood. I'm trying, and uh, you know, tr- the, the work of being. A human is being less stoic, but I don't know. You I'm seem very sure. chill. Uh, yeah. I mean, I th- again, I think I'm really good at 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 managing my outward appearance so that I mm. seem super calm all the time. Okay. But I have the same emotions as everyone else, and I actually get excited. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, now really? Now know how. <laughs> I mean, never like, it. like, like, uh, you, well, you have, but you've just not been aware. Yeah, it's not been revealed to us. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, like I cannot use an exclamation point. <laughs> it is so me. uncharacteristic of yeah. me. I've actually started I've, in the last two years or so. I do use them because I'm like, I gotta, you know. <laughs> I guess everybody wants this from me. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's what everybody wants. That'll make this. I'll paper this over. But yeah. So anyway, yeah. I'm often removing. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll put like five <laughs> and like no, three's probably. But I'm like, I don't. They don't need all this, and I think, uh, I think as a woman, sometimes too, you're like so yeah. um, tone policing mm. yourself yeah. too, and it's like I have to be friendly, but maybe I just yeah. want to be more matter of fact, you know. So I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just gonna take that away. Yeah, Let's just do the period. Yeah, but sometimes I really do want to be friendly, and then I ha- I have this sometimes. like back and forth in my head, and I'm like, no, I'm keeping them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have five exclamation points. But yeah, yeah. I have to remind myself that not every text message needs an emoji. I'm like always yeah. like, what's the emoji I, for this <laughs> one? <laughs> yeah. You know what? The young people will like clown you for that. Oh really? They're, they're, yeah, they're not doing those. Really? Yeah. Weirdly, I. You know, know what? That. I am realizing. There's a few. You're that, right. 
and they're they're not you know I think they see it as like a millennial yeah they, mm-hmm. I mean far be it from me to say I don't know but I think that's the vibe I the word so on the street too. is Probably right. it's not and if you do use yeah. an emoji there's uh, yeah. like very specific ones and there's yeah. ones like that the eggplant I think Gen yeah. Z will use <laughs> am I wrong about that that's no maybe that, I don't maybe know. that's maybe I don't that's Gen Z way in I think it could be millennial yeah that's probably millennial I feel so stupid. Um, well, we do, before we move on to career, we do have that question of, of an embarrassing story from your middle school oh. era. Are we, are we circling back? Are we, <laughs> well, like, it doesn't have to be the story you were thinking about. Yeah, but we okay. do ask every The thing I was thinking about was story. actually a more, more recent thing. Um, okay. okay. An embarrassing story from middle school. Yeah. So I was, I definitely had a crush on this guy. We were, we were like on this like um, ski trip, like a bunch of people. And... Well, you remember, like, when you were, like, anywhere with snow, and it was, like, the thing, people were, like, snowball fights, and then, like, you know, it was an opportunity for, like, guys to be just mm. pelting you with snowballs, and people could just sort of, like, be flirty in the snow. Mm-hmm. And, sure, um, yeah. and I had glasses, so I was, like, not the face. Not the face. <laughs> <laughs> I got so mad. I remember one guy, like, um, got me right in the face, and my glasses broke, and I, oh. I told his dad. Uh, I was good, like, good. he broke my glasses. <laughs> um, <laughs> I love that. Like, these are my eyes. I love that you went it's to not his cool. Dad. I did. I'm I did serious. go to his dad. Yeah. Yeah. I, was at, I was at church and I went and found his dad and I was mm. like, your son just broke my glasses. Oh. He, then his dad um, fixed them for me. But anyway, so the story is we were on the ski trip. Um, people were like, you know, doing the snowball thing and like running around. And, um, and then the guy that I liked who had been throwing snowballs at me. He was below, and I was, like, on an upper-level deck because it was a ski lodge, right, with, like... And I saw him below, and I'm, like, two stories above. And I saw this huge, like, ice flow oh. where I was, like, oh, oh, oh. I'm going to get you. <laughs> and I oh, grabbed no. it. It was so big that I picked it up with both hands. <gasps> oh, my God, Jenny, no, no, no. Is he alive? <laughs> he is alive. <laughs> no, he's... It's a fair question. Oh. I was, just, like, being so dumb. It was, like, where your brain wasn't fully... Yeah, like, I totally yeah. understand. Processing, yes, yes, like, yes, what's yes, happening. Yes. No, I get oh that. You're, like, this is cute. This is cute. Yeah. Let me, like, me... <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So I pick up this huge boulder of ice, <laughs> and I drop it right above his head. No, 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 Jenny. And I'm, like, ah! Oh, like, laugh. I'm, like, ready to, like... I'm, like, guys! Oh, no. And he was, like, really hurt. He was oh. really mad. Oh. Like, he... Like, it hit him on the head. It was yeah. really heavy. He stood up, and he was so mad. And I was like, oh, shit. Can I say shit? Yeah, yeah, you can totally. say it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Every episode has a little E. Okay, okay. <laughs> so then um, I didn't realize. I mean, he was really actually enraged. And um, <laughs> oh <my laughs> and he wasn't nice at all. And then he started chasing after me, like, really mad. Oh, like, my God. It was like, then it cer- turned suddenly a little, yeah. like, yeah, you know. Yeah, it sounds. Took a turn. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Oh my I mean, gosh. Were you running? Were you I was running, running like in fear? For my life. But there's all this ice. And so I was like, hoo, 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 running through. Um, and then everyone's like playing cards and then hanging out, like, what are you doing? And I'm like, help me, help me. <laughs> Tell me this is like the revenant. People thought yeah. we were just like in a flirtation. No, not at all. He's it wasn't bleeding. That. It was real. Was just that you on ice. Like, like attempted to murder him though. And <laughs> it was serious. And then he did finally grab me. And then he like pinned my arms behind my back, and then his friend like <gasps> threw snowballs at me. Oh my god! And then like I know, and that was really embarrassing. Yeah, no, that's it was so really embarrassing. Cruel. And then um, I then I like slipped. He like I like slipped, and then like and then my hands like um sort of burned on the ice, yeah. and then I was mad mm. and embarrassed. And yeah. he was sort of standing above, and I like grab I like reached at his sweater and like yanked it really hard like you know those like nice structure sweaters that guys would wear structure <laughs> it was structure Whoa. yeah it was like By the, the nice weave yeah yeah, like, yeah. yanked it oh, really yeah. hard and like ripped it <laughs> like I don't this even know like what leg I had to stand chaos. on why was I so mad because I was the one who almost killed him yeah I was humiliated so then I lashed no, out fair. and yeah. got a hunk of a sweater and then it was it but then all day long I was just really embarrassed and people mm. were like yeah it was kind of on you that you like <laughs> Yeah, like nobody had any sympathy for me. I was talking to all my girlfriends. I was like, nobody had my back. Nobody, nobody was there for me. You guys were just like flirting with people and like playing cards, and nobody like cared. Like what happened to me? <laughs> and so people were like, you get what you get, kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that was that's my story. That's, an, that's t- a know, great I, story. That could have gone in a very actually. sad. Direction, so really happy. I like how morally ambiguous it is. Yeah, it's really yeah. Ambiguous. You know, because <laughs> for all sides. Yeah, because yeah. he did. He did initiate some kind of, mm-hmm. you know, unfair. I just took it to a level. Dynamic. Sometimes it's and like, then, yeah, you think you're 
being flirty and then like they say something like, oh, your ears. And then you go, oh, you're and then you say something really cutting and you yeah, still yeah. feel like you're mm-hmm. doing a flirty mm-hmm. thing. And then <laughs> yeah. people are like, wow, that was that was really like too much. We're given so many mixed messages, too, about like what is flirting. You know, it's like, oh, if a boy's mean to you, then like he's really into you. And like, yeah. actually, it's like not the right messaging. I don't think. Totally. Mm-hmm. No. It's never been my instinct, and it doesn't actually feel good to 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 genuinely be made fun of, you know, even in the name of humor. Like I don't know, it's it's an interesting cultural thing that we that, that we're all working with. Agreed. I wonder because I I think it's important for young people to have mentors, or it means mm. a lot for young people to have adults in their lives who will encourage them. And I wonder if you had anyone who encouraged you to write or to pursue creative writing. Um, okay. This is a, this is a interesting story and it's, it's, I think because it's not like a black and white story, it's not just the feel good story. It's, um, you know, like life is gray. Mm. I, um, had this teacher in elementary school, um, who would always like praise my stories and say like, what a beautiful writer I was. And, um, to even where in my yearbook, she wrote, I'm going to see your name on a book one day. Mm. Um, and so we had this, these little, those notebooks in our desk and you would write your stories and mine would always be missing because she'd be showing them off in the teacher's lounge. Um, But I remember this one day where we were doing, it was the first day of like long division. And I, as I previously said, I'm like not the best at math. And she called me up to the board and then like, it was the first day. Okay. So yeah, like, and I was nervous. And so um, like I didn't get it right. And she like grabbed my face (gasps) um, really (laughs) Face. Okay, she grabbed my face really hard by the chin and like dug her nails into oh the my skin. God. What? Jenny, no, Why no, can't no. you understand? And then all the kids were laughing and stuff, like even my friends, because and my friend Jessica afterwards was like, it was because it looked funny because your face got like, right. you know, so like, yeah, I understand. Right. Yeah, it was that. Yeah. But I still like, it still like hurt when oh, everyone was yeah. laughing. Mm. And the point of the story is to say that like I believed her when she said I was a good writer and then I believed yeah. her when she said I was like bad oh, at math yeah. and yeah. I think yeah. it's like when you're a kid and like an adult tells you something about yourself I think that you really do absorb that and believe it totally yeah. you know so yes yeah. I saw myself as a really good writer um because she was always encouraging that and then I was like oh I suck at math yeah. from that moment and I never yeah. really felt that way I think until that huh. moment and you just kind of have that like self-fulfilling prophecy the story that you yeah. tell yourself is i'm bad at this but i'm good at this mm. yeah yeah well i was gonna say actually her grabbing your face is way more impactful coming from a teacher who who had encouraged you so much like it mm-hmm. it hurts way more you know if it's the wow. teacher who's already mean who you know you can expect that from then but the, in, the inverse is also true right because because she was so mean when she was t- telling me how good i was then I was like, I must be like awesome mm, because yeah. like because she doesn't hold back. When yeah, I, like because yeah. she, she's so mean wrong. and like abusive. Wow. Mm. The <laughs> ironic thing is, like, as a former teacher, it's like you know that if a student's not understanding, it's your fault. Like, yeah. you need to do a better job explaining. I mean, it's really intense that she had that reaction. It says a lot about like how she's feeling about you herself. Know, it was she's old school. I think the only reason I'm even telling the story because I think she's um passed away yeah. mm. and um. I saw her at like a Burger King years later. I think I was like in college and she came up to me and recognized me, which, you know, probably because there weren't that many like Asian kids, I guess. She came up to me and she's like, Jenny, like, I'm so proud of you. I always knew you were going to like do well. And I was like, thank you. And that was it. And I felt like I wasn't going to say anything like, oh my God, you were like so abusive to me. Cause like mm-hmm. she had a story in her mind of what kind of teacher she was. Mm. So, I just want to like let her keep that she Mm. that idea of herself because at that point I think she was retired. Mm -hmm. Um, I think she may have been pushed out because of she was like squeezing kids' faces. Yeah, like she had like slapped in like a girl my neighborhood and stuff. Oh my god! But this is back in the day. Yeah, back in the day (laughs) when all that was fully acceptable. (laughs) (laughs) But actually, I have a question for you. Sure. I you know I have like two TV shows, um, and I also um, have. My books were adapted into films. Um, yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. You're assuming you should be successful. All right, what? What's your question? My point is, I'm just an actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. They're, they're with young people. The story is about young people. Yeah. And um, you know, so it's always like I really like um, 
the discovery of like finding like people who are just starting out and who um, haven't had like a big career yet. I really like um, finding like new talent. Mm. I think it's really exciting and like I feel really privileged to be able to do that. And with my show, Summer Returned Pretty, most of the cast from any of them, it was like their first job. Yeah. Mm. And um, I think I think I saw with To All the Boys um, how like it was like literally overnight. Like Noah Centineo, he mm -hmm. had I don't know a few hundred thousand followers, and then he was like fifteen million followers in the course wow. of like a week, wow. literally yeah. a week. Wow. Um, and even for me, as as the writer, it was like I had my really cozy, safe community of my readers, and I was really open with them online, and we had this mm -hmm. great relationship that felt like they really knew me. And then yeah. suddenly, I think having like a hit Netflix movie, there was just like millions of of like people who had seen it and then knew about me in a way that yeah. I felt really like exposed mm -hmm. and I then didn't feel safe um, to be just so open online anymore. And so I think with Summer Returned Pretty, which is my first TV show, I really had that experience in my mind about how um, shocking that was and like a little traumatic. Um, so I was always, with them I'm really careful and just thinking about them and wanting them to have like, just be able to still have their lives, I guess. And yeah. so I'm, my question for you is, um, do you look back with like having that huge, I remember when Gossip Girl came out, that huge, it was, it was everywhere, yeah, all the billboards, yeah. everything on the subway. Do you wish, is there anything that you wish that people had like told you or done for you to help you mm -hmm. kind of ease into becoming mm. a huge like celebrity? It's a great question. It is. I mean, there's a good answer somewhere. I, I'm not, nothing immediately comes to mind because I feel like the whole uh, challenge of fame specifically, yeah. which is different from any other kind of success, I think. Uh, like celebrity fame, you know, um, is that you just cannot possibly be prepared for it until you've experienced it. And then it's a long, depending on the nature of your own celebrity, how long it lasts, all this stuff. I think if anything, for me specifically, mm -hmm. I think I would have said, I see, because I'm older me, what I would have done is grabbed my face <laughs> like that and been like, no, you, no, you fucking listen to me, okay? No one else can do this to you, but I can do this to you. <laughs> listen, you don't have to prove yourself. You won't, you can't. Um, it's just not a part of the equation. You, you, you just don't try to prove yourself in the space of an interview, certainly. Mm. And then, and then prove yourself how, like as uh, an actor or like, yeah, as a, I don't know. I mean, what is, any, what is anybody trying to prove? I mean, yeah, I guess it's like probably intelligence, talent, credibility, which all just comes to self-worth, mm. which means like if we're, if we're in any situation, I think trying to prove ourselves we're trying to prove our self-worth which means we have low self-worth and that probably identifies more people than it doesn't mm. people with struggling with feelings of low self-worth and so if i could somehow impart to that 20 year old who just taken that role mm. like yeah it would it's also a different time i mean especially how old was noah when this was happening noah I think he was like 20. I want to say he was 22. Okay. That's well, yeah. So that's, that's, I was, I wasn't sure if he was a bit 21 younger. 21 maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's still very young, but, yeah. um, but on my cast now, they're all Lola, who's, a, who's the lead, was 18. Let me wow. cast her. Mm. Um, and then they're all like 21, 22. They're, they're young. But then, you know, people had said to me, like, you know, first season, they work for you. And then second season, um, you work with each other. And third season, you work for them. And I have to say, I'm like, my experience um, with them and the show has um, done well. They they're all like really like good people, mm. Mm -hmm. and I haven't found that like they're just very um, yeah good hearted like kind people. So it yeah. hasn't been that. That's great. It's not worth it to work with people who. It's true for years. Good. Yeah, no, because because we're really in it together. We're together yeah. for six months filming, yeah. mm, yeah. and we're really like um, sort of spirited away. We're in North Carolina at a beach. Mm -hmm. um, it's different, I'm sure, like doing a show in the city where... Yeah, it's its own thing. It's its own thing. They're not like going to the clubs, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. We're just <laughs> clubs, yeah. Like playing yeah. mafia. 
Yeah. Oh, oh that sounds that sounds really lovely. That it's so sound. lovely. Yeah. They're all lovely. We've had other guests come on the show and explain who who were child actors, talk about how how inappropriate often things they were exposed to on set were and being exposed to really adult behavior and even like people not taking into account that it would be very hard for a child to say no. So taking advantage of the fact that they're probably going to say yes to everything. And I was wondering as a showrunner who works with young people, what are you learning about creating environments that are protective for them? I think um, being having that like relationship where I'm saying you can tell me if something doesn't feel right. Mm. Um, if you don't feel like you can keep working you know it's it's a really weird because ultimately everyone there we all have the same goal which is like we need to get our day done and we need to get the scenes and stuff right so you're trying to get it's, it's a lot of like juxtaposing forces in a way it is yeah mm-hmm. right because um ultimately that's that is the goal and it is it is work um and sometimes there is that weird language around um hollywood where like we're like a family and this mm-hmm. and that but like it is it is a job um, and so when, sometimes when you use that family language, things, the boundaries can yeah. get like a little bit weird too. Mm. Yep. I check in with them a lot and ask them how they feel. And um, I I told like Lola, who, like I said, she's a, the lead of my show who mm-hmm. I really adore. I told her from the beginning that like she's more important than like, the show. You know, mm. like that her well-being matters <laughs> to me cry. more than like the show. <laughs> Truly, like um, – yeah. Like I really came to like love her so much. So so I feel like I'm gonna tear up. I really I really <laughs> yeah, do care about really her. Um so when things are hard and stuff, I, I'm like you can just like tell me and we'll figure it out. You know, because mm-hmm. it can get so intimidating too when you've got like ADs walking around and everyone's like, yeah. you know, we gotta like we gotta go, we gotta go. And mm. um and I felt it myself even as like when I'm rewriting something and you know, we we're losing light, you gotta go fast and um to slow down for a second and just like take a beat, mm-hmm. you know, and that and not to diminish the work that we're doing, but ultimately, you know, is it going to be the end of the world if we have to pick this up tomorrow or like mm-hmm. come back? Um, if someone's like really um, tired or it's not, or they're sick. The environment on a set is the stakes are heightened to the point that it feels like you are there curing cancer yeah. or sending people to space. <laughs> it's like the and and it's all ultimately because a lot of money is being spent mm-hmm. so it comes down from the studios and you know no one who is currently alive is responsible for generating this but we, but everybody's upholding it to some degree by and large it's understandable and um partly necessary and usually forgivable depending on like the transgression but then i think everybody finds themselves at some point like wait are we gonna let like capitalism like crush somebody right now mm-hmm. like and actually traumatize somebody right now or are we gonna like all stop and be like hey guys it's a television show mm-hmm. You know, like it's not what is so important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's tough because then it's like, yeah, like we're losing light, or or like we have to pull the plug, like in this moment or whatever. And there are so many factors things. and so many yeah, people working so hard, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Cool. to make it happen and, yeah. with a location or whatever it is. And like yeah. we had a moment um, this past season where um, one of my actors was like feeling pretty sick and ha- had been like battling through it, and this was our last day filming and we were done we were wrapped and um i had like i was um at home um and facetimed her just to check in everyone was saying she's good she's good she she feels okay to go and then i facetimed her and she's like in the makeup trailer and i was like looking at her face and i was like are you like are you good to go and she was like yeah yeah i can do it and then i was like i don't think so though like i it just looked at her and i was like let's just she was like no no i'm gonna be okay and then I go, I don't think that you are okay, and let's just call it right now and say we're just not doing it, and we're, we'll have to come back. Like, I feel sorry to everybody. We're going to have to, like, figure it out. Mm. And she started crying, like, really hard. And I was like, look, doesn't it feel like a relief that you just make the decision, mm. and that's the decision? And then people were mad at me. Sure, because they're like, why did you just, like, make that call right then and there and whatever? And then we had to, like, do reshoots in, like, L.A., and it was a whole mm. thing. But – Ultimately, it was a really big scene for her. So I felt like it wasn't fair yeah. to power our way through one of her, like, biggest scenes of the season just because she realized, like, the whole crew, everybody wanted to be done. Of course, done, yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. And that, but you, at what cost? And then you lose, I think, maybe a little trust um, with your actors as well if you, mm-hmm. if you sometimes push for things that, you know, for the, our relationship and I think also just for her own sense of, like, um, happiness and, like, pride. 
for the work that she was doing, I felt like it was important. Yeah, it's really beautiful. That is what people in so many industries are are, are faced with. It's like, are we going to let money as the bottom line, mm-hmm. like actually potentially just hurt someone? And mm-hmm. we know that it does by default. So anyway, I think that's really cool. I think and then it was really okay. Cool. Guess yeah, what? Of course we start, it's so okay. okay. A few weeks later, people had to fly out to LA, and I'm sorry yeah. that they had to do and that. And Netflix is but all right, by the way. It was Netflix. It was Amazon. And, um, <laughs> Amazon's they're, they're better. better. <laughs> they're definitely all right. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and everybody yeah. was fine with it, and it all worked out. Um, I think for me, I think because I wrote the books as well, I definitely feel the pressure I feel isn't just of here's a show, but it's about Mm -hmm. people who read those books when they were 12 years old. And now they're, you know, 15 years later, they're like, um, working adults and it means something to them. So I really want to do a good job. And like, um, I think everyone in the cast, that's part of why I have so much like respect for them is they all understand that too. That's really cool. Yeah. I love Uh, that. That is, yeah, yeah, I do too. You don't, you don't get that a lot. No, it feels, it feels rare. This is special. I think people externalize the well being of actors. Yeah. I really love that. Penn and I got a script recently. I hope this isn't like too braggy, but I feel like it's helpful to hear stories like this because other people, yeah. you know, go into the industry. We got a script. We really liked it and it would have been casting young actors. I won't give the details, Penn, but we were really impressed. It was really funny. would have been a great movie, but the lead actress, there was like something about her that you'd have to cast someone who had the thing that the lead actress had. Mm-hmm, and we mm-hmm. just couldn't stop thinking about this real girl, what's going to happen to her getting cast mm-hmm. for this particular thing. Like it's going to, it's going to be painful and it's gonna follow her for a while yeah and we just like we can't we decided that like we can't commodify the well-being of the human girl who has to play this part to make a great movie it's not Mm -hmm. animation it's a real person and you know just like as a company value like don't externalize the well-being of your actors because they're not objects they're people and that happens so often in this industry i have a question that is sort of sort of trivial but i i'm interested and it takes us into another direction people who are really good in their craft sometimes develop like habits or rituals before they sit down to do the thing and i've read that kurt vonnegut would do push-ups and sit-ups before he'd sit down to write beethoven i was very surprised to hear this by the way i know like i love vonnegut yeah. And, like, that does not seem like Vonnegut. <laughs> yeah, he was my number one for a long time. Beethoven would count 60 coffee beans for his, like, coffee before he would sit down to compose. I'm wondering if you, over the years, have developed any sort of, like, habits or rituals that help you get into your zone. When I'm writing a book, it's like I sit down, I'm getting, like, um, some sort of iced fruity drink mm. or maybe iced tea. Like how fruity? Mm like a juice i love a juice <laughs> mm. there's like a fresh squeezed apple juice mm. Ooh. yeah that's what yeah. that's what i like or like a lemonade mm. um and i've got that and then i'm like let me look at my emails let me like what's up what's going on vulture what's what's happening on twitter and i'm looking at that for a bit and it's kind of like you're just like revving yourself up mm-hmm. to open up the blank page mm. it takes a minute to like get into it mm-hmm. i guess so that's that's sort of my ritual I, i'm not someone who can just sit down and like immediately is like you know, yeah. type, type, type. I just I have to warm up for a second. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Jenny, I want to ask you one. We have a final question we ask everyone, but I want to slip one in before we go. Mm-hmm. I am obsessed with Taylor Swift, and the use of her song in the trailer is maybe the best use of a Taylor song ever to promote a TV show. Incredible use of her song in the trailer, and it's an unreleased Taylor's version from 1989, in my opinion, the best Taylor Swift album of all time. How did you get her to give you permission to use an unreleased Taylor's version? As I was writing um, the book, I was listening to Fearless, and um, I almost dedicated the second book in the series to her because of how much... It was almost like when I needed to get into an emotional heightened place, I could just tap into that vein when I was listening Mm. um, to her music. And um, I think my readers are really big fans of her so i just felt like it was the biggest gift that i could give them if i if i could get it and so uh with summer turned pretty when even when i pitched the show i was like in here the final moments he stands up and then we hear dun 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 and then we then it's taylor and then i was Mm -hmm. like playing the song and i'm like this is this is the finale um you played it in the pitch yeah Amazing. I did. Taking notes yeah. here. Yeah. And then notes, people were, yeah. I wanted to imprint it on their minds mm. so yeah. that even if it ended up being like, like expensive, that they weren't going to be able to say no to me because I already like yeah. said this <laughs> is what it is. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, That's so smart, Jenny. And um, I wrote her a letter. Sweet. Uh, yeah. And said um, what she meant to me and mm. what, I, what I knew she meant 
uh, to my readers and how it would be like the best gift I could give them if she would um, do that. And so we got like five songs. It's amazing. Um, yeah. And, and we're so lucky. And then like, yeah, it was probably the best thing that could have happened to the show. So I am so grateful to her. Um, and yeah, I love her music so much. Aww. Same. I have a Same. friend who says, never underestimate the power of a good letter. And he'll like write to his favorite <laughs> authors. Yeah. Okay, he's like had Skype calls with his favorite authors or like, yeah, I think it's, it's Nathan, true. Nathan Rayno. Yes, Shout is. out. <laughs> Shout out Nathan Rainsford. Oh, yeah. yeah he's Nathan, he's just yeah. a good friend of ours. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's Back great. in London. Great person. Are there any any current projects you want to plug before we before we ask you the final question? Sure. So, um, Exo Kitty is a spinoff of To All the Boys, mm -hmm. coming out in May, on Netflix. Exciting. Um, and that is basically uh, Kitty, who's like, the youngest sister. It's her story, um, and she goes to boarding school in Korea. Um, wow, to, that's so cool. Yeah. So we yeah, filmed like in that. Korea. It was it was awesome. Oh wow. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Um, and then season two of The Summer I Turned Pretty. We have not announced yet when it's coming out, um, and so it's still a secret. I'm really, I cannot yeah. wait to share it with people. I'm yeah. so excited. Um, I'm so sorry I keep cutting in. I'll let Penn ask the final question. I just want to say this. My sister, her name is Jenna, she is obsessed with To All the Boys trilogy. It's like her comfort movie. She watches it all the time, and she lives in Sweden. We're really close. Anytime we visit each other, we watch the first one together every Aww. time. So I associate really? the first one. Yeah. I associate Aww. the first so movie with my sister. That's so yeah. Cute. That is so sweet. Well, I hope she will um, check out the show. I think that um, it's really fun. It's still like the same sort of like heartbeat, I think, cool. yeah. of the originals. Really exciting. Our last question mm -hmm. is, uh, I mean, you, you kind of asked me the same question. Mm -hmm. a, little bit, a little bit of a, a different version. A Taylor's version, if you will. <laughs> but uh, a I don't Jenny's even know version. if that makes sense. Jenny's version. Jenny's version. Jenny's <laughs> version, yeah. Um, so now we have Penny's version. <laughs> what? I'm sorry for that. Uh, if you could go back to your 12-year-old self, 12-year-old mm -hmm. Jennifer becoming Jenny, mm -hmm. uh, what would you say? I would do? say, I would say, don't worry about the math. You're mm -hmm. really not going to be using that, so it's fine. <laughs> I would say don't be doing so much like plucking of your eyebrows because it's never going to grow back. Mm -hmm. I did a little too short. There is a little space that never filled back. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. I really I would feel say, like that should be a PSA. Yeah. I think so too. Yours is like a notes memo. It, yours is just like some real practical things. Like, Very look, we're, we're not going to address major life issues here. Just like dot, 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 dot. And I would say um, you. Um, are beautiful and mm. um you will as you get older you'll be like oh like um feeling like um you're fat or you're like not pretty or all those things and you don't really appreciate in the moment where i think you know all young people are inherently beautiful mm -hmm. um and you but you don't really like appreciate it at the time and you spend like a lot of energy on that so i would say that mm. to little jenny mm. and keep on reading and also just like um that's it, though. And also maybe, like, be nicer to your mom and stop That's being, like, one. such a little bitch. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> stop being such a little bitch. Just grab you know? her face. Grab her like, face. <laughs> but I even need someone from the future to tell me that. Yeah. So I still get so, yeah. like, annoyed. Yeah. You know how it is. Yeah. Like, we're like, why am I, like, snapping at my mom right now? I, I feel know. Like, so guilty. Honestly. You know? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Jenny, thank you so much for coming on. This is yeah. such thank a pleasure. You. Oh, yeah, it was it our really pleasure. Was. You guys were great. So thank nice. you so much. This thank is really you. fun. I was so tired, but now I have like great energy. Jenny, you look beautiful. Oh my gosh, thank you. Do you I know was... why? I, I heard. Oh, she was in the variety <laughs> women's luncheon. Yeah. I was Very like, cool. I'm so like dressed up right now. And I, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was so long too. You know, when you look at the list and you're going, there's eight honorees and then someone's going to introduce them. And then people were talking, doing their little like acceptance speech for like half an hour. Wow. <laughs> I left early. I left early, but I felt sad because I walked out on... Um, uh, Seth Meyers introducing Judy Bloom. Who? Oh wow! I mean, y'all should have Judy Bloom. We should have we Judy should. Bloom. You're right. That's a you great know? idea. Because yeah. she's got that Margaret movie um, coming soon, so she's mm. I think okay on the road. 
Yeah, we That's should. A great That's a good idea. suggestion. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Jenny. Welcome. Uh, do you do you take a cut for any of your yeah. PR? Or <laughs> <laughs> are you coming on as a producer? Yeah. <laughs> we need it. I mean, we need some, we need some some good direction here.